Hi everyone, I am Dr. Nitin. In the previous videos, I described how to calculate heart rate in ECG when the rhythm is regular and also when the rhythm is irregular. We also learned the criteria for diagnosis of left bundle branch lock and right bundle branch lock. Now in this video, I am going to discuss the types of atrioventricular blocks in the electrocardiogram. I will discuss approach to AV blocks so that you can easily identify any AV block in the ECG. Then at the end, I will briefly touch upon the management of AV blocks. First of all, we will see what is the normal rhythm and then I will tell about heart blocks. This is the ECG rhythm of a normal person. Let's try to identify various waves and complexes in this normal ECG first. Each cardiac cycle starts with a P wave which occurs because of atrial depolarization. P wave is followed by a QRS complex which occurs because of ventricular depolarization. And then each QRS complex is followed by a T wave which results from ventricular repolarization. And this cycle is repeated with each and every cardiac beat leading to a sequence of P wave followed by a QRS complex and then QRS complex is followed by a T wave as you can see here. So in a normal rhythm, there should be a 1 is to 1 relationship of P wave and QRS complex. And there should be a normal PR interval that is between 120 milliseconds to 200 milliseconds. In our ECG rhythm, each P wave is followed by a QRS complex. Hence, 1 is to 1 relationship of P wave and QRS complex is maintained throughout. Now we calculate PR interval which is measured from initiation of P wave to the initiation of QRS complex. This is equivalent to 4 small squares. Each small square on ECG paper is equal to 40 milliseconds. Hence, PR interval in this case is 160 milliseconds, which is within normal limits. So, this ECG doesn't have any AV block and shows normal rhythm. Now, we shall learn about heart block, also called as atrioventricular or AV block. AV block develops when there is some conduction disturbance between atrium and ventricle. AV block can be of three types. First degree AV block, second degree AV block, and third degree AV block. Third degree AV block is also called as complete heart block. Second degree heart block is further subdivided into Mobitz type 1 and type 2 heart blocks. Mobitz type 1 is also known as Benke Beck phenomenon. We shall understand about each of these one by one. First degree AV block. These are the criteria for diagnosis of first degree AV block. There should be one is to one AV relationship maintained throughout. That is each P wave should be followed by a QRS complex. The only problem in first degree AV block is prolonged PR interval. The normal PR interval is between 120 to 200 milliseconds. So any value more than 200 milliseconds is considered abnormal. This block occurs because of conduction delay at the level of AV node. Hence this is a suprahesian type of AV block. First degree AV block is common and often doesn't require any treatment. Now look at this ECG strip and try to find out what is going on. To analyze this ECG properly, we'll have to identify various waves and complexes in this ECG. This is the P wave at the start of cardiac cycle, which is followed by a QRS complex. And QRS complex is followed by a T wave. And this pattern is repeated in each cardiac cycle. If we look carefully, each P wave is followed by a QRS complex. 
Hence, one is to one AB relationship is maintained throughout. Now let's calculate PR interval from the initiation of P wave to the initiation of QRS complex. There are nine small squares, which gives us PR interval of 360 milliseconds, which is more than 200 milliseconds. And the duration of more than 200 milliseconds is considered as prolonged PR interval. So this ECG has first degree heart block or first degree AV block because of prolonged PR interval and AV conduction is 1 is to 1 without any missed QRS complex. Now we'll understand about second degree AV block. As I told earlier, it can be of two types, Morbid's type 1 and Morbid's type 2. Type 1 second degree AV block is also called as Benke Beck phenomenon. These are the criteria for the diagnosis of second degree type 1 AV block. 1 is to 1 AV relationship is not maintained throughout because intermittently P wave will not be followed by QRS complex. There is gradual prolongation of PR interval and then there is one missed conduction to ventricle. That is QRS complex will not be present following P wave. This pattern will repeat itself after missed QRS complex because of resumption of AV nodal conduction. This block occurs because of delay at the level of AV node. Hence, this is a suprahesian type of conduction block. Now look at this ECG rhythm and try to identify what is happening. Okay, let's analyze this ECG step. First of all, we'll try to identify various waves and complexes in this trace. Only then we'll be able to understand the abnormality. This is a P wave. This is next P wave. And I'll mark all the P waves for you. These all are P waves. This is a QRS complex. Subsequent QRS complex and so on. We should not confuse these deflections with P waves because these are T waves. With some practice, you will be able to differentiate between P waves and T waves, even in tachycardia ECGs, where sometimes it can be difficult to separate out P waves from T waves, as these waves can be fused together, unlike in this case, where P and T waves are separate and it is easy to differentiate between two. Now we'll try to see AV relationship. This P wave is followed by this QRS. This P wave is followed by this QRS and this P wave is also followed by a QRS complex. But this P wave is not followed by any QRS complex. It means that this P wave did not conduct down to ventricle and ventricular depolarization did not happen after atrial depolarization. Therefore, there is a P wave but not a QRS complex. In other words, 1 is to 1 AB relationship is not maintained here as we can see 1 P wave is not followed by a QRS complex. This cycle gets repeated further until another QRS is missed. Intermittent missed QRS complexes confirm the diagnosis of second degree AV block. Now we have to find out whether this is Movitz type 1 or type 2 AV block. For this we have to look at PR intervals. Let's calculate PR interval in this trace. PR interval in the first beat is 120 milliseconds. In the second beat, it is 200 milliseconds. And in the third beat, PR interval is 240 milliseconds. So we can see that there is gradual prolongation of PR interval as demonstrated here. Summarizing the findings in this ECG, there is gradual prolongation of PR interval and later one QRS complex is missed. This is classical feature of type 1 AV block which is also called as Benke Beck phenomenon. Coming to Movitz type 2 second degree AV block, these are the criteria for diagnosis of type 2 AV block. First of all, 1 is to 1 AV relationship is not maintained throughout because of intermittent dropped QRS complexes 
and this occurs due to intermittent failure of AB conduction. The feature which differentiates this from type 1 is that here PR interval remains constant unlike gradually prolonged PR interval as seen in type 1 AV block. Movid's type 2 AV block is always pathological and block typically occurs below AV node either at bundle of his or bundle branches. Hence level of AV block is intra or infrahesian. Now let's have a look on this ECG trace and find out what is going on here. Again we'll start analyzing this ECG with identification of P waves and QRS complexes. These all are P waves. You can follow as I am marking them. And these are QRS complexes. Having identified P waves and QRS complexes, now we'll look at AV relationship, whether 1 is to 1 AV conduction has been maintained throughout or not. First P wave is followed by this QRS. Next P wave is also followed by a QRS. But third P wave is not followed by any QRS complex. This cycle is repeated again and again. So 1 is to 1 AV conduction is not maintained throughout. This proves that there is second degree AV block. Now we have to see whether this is type 1 or type 2 second degree AV block. For that we have to measure PR intervals. PR interval in this case remains fixed. It is around 120 milliseconds. There is no gradual prolongation of PR interval in this case. And PR interval remains constant in the conducted beads. So in this ECG we can see that 1 is to 1 AV relationship is not maintained throughout because of intermittent missed QRS complexes and PR interval remains constant. These features suggest that second degree type 2 AV block is present in this ECG. Now coming to third degree AV block which is also known as complete AV block or complete heart block. These are the criteria for complete AV block. There is complete failure of electrical conduction from atrium to ventricle. Hence, there is complete AV dissociation. P waves are being generated from SA node, but these don't conduct down to ventricle. QRS complexes originate from activation of subsidiary pacemakers, either from AV node or his bundle or ventricular pacemaker. Since atrium and ventricle are functioning independently in CHV, the atrial rate and ventricular rate will be different, and atrial rate will be more than ventricular rate. If the site of ventricular activation is AV node, then QRS complex is narrow and block is suprahesian. And if QRS complex originates from ventricular pacemaker, then QRS complex will be wider and block is termed infrahesian. Now let's have a look at this ECG. Again, first we'll try to identify P waves and QRS complexes. Only then we can assess relationship between them. These are P waves. I'll mark all the P waves first. And these are QRS complexes. This funny looking QRS complex is because of a P wave falling over QRS complex. We can see that there is no relationship between P waves and subsequent QRS complexes. This means that there is complete dissociation between atrial and ventricular electrical activity and QRS complexes are coming independent of P waves. PR interval is so much variable that it appears that they are not linked to each other. In other words, P and QRS are dissociated from each other. Now let's calculate atrial and ventricular rates. Atrial rate is 150 per minute and ventricular rate is 83 per minute. I have already discussed various methods to calculate heart rates in previous video. So we'll not go into details of that in this example. So atrial rate is clearly more than ventricular rate in this case. 
summarizing the findings in this ecg trace there is complete av dissociation and atrial rate is more than ventricular rate these features suggest diagnosis of complete heart block in this ecg now we'll briefly understand what is to be done when you have detected atrioventricular block in an electrocardiogram first degree av block and morbid type 1 block are benign conditions and don't require pacemaker implantation we have to identify any reversible cause and need to treat that cause along with monitoring the patient for progression of ab block morbid type 2 block and complete heart block generally require pacemaker implantation as these are considered malignant conditions which can lead to symptoms in the form of giddiness syncope or sudden cardiac arrest due to low heart rate thank you for watching this video if you like this video then please share the link with your friends so that they can also learn something new and please do subscribe to this channel for receiving updates about similar informative and educational videos thank you once again guys